from verses 1, Revelation 6, from verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given, on, given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see that ought not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale us, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him or unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. May the Lord God add blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, we want to continue our search light or focus our search light on the subject how the seals came the way the seals came out of the ages amen the way the seals came out of the ages I believe um, last week in our study we got to the point where we established that um, for sure before the ages began there were no seals um, the seals the prophet said came as a result of the ages and so we said that the proclamation that we saw in Revelation 5 wherein the Bible said um, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals we said the reason losing of the seals was included was because of the ages. Because if there were no ages, the marriage of the Lamb would have, would have taken place, the marriage of the Lamb would have taken place almost immediately. Is that right? Because you add the ages, the age of the fathers. So what should follow the age of the fathers was the... Um, the Omega Bride Age. That's what should have followed the Alpha Age. Because Brother Bram told us in the message masterpiece that Jesus is Alpha and Omega. He is nothing in between. So the reason we add in between was because of the great fall that took place. So because the bride fell, she actually fell into the ages. So we wouldn't have had the period called in between. And that period in between is a 1,910 years that span from AD 53 to 1963, which was the seven church ages. And so because we had the seven church ages was why we had seven seals. Is that right? That was the reason we had seven seals. So now we're looking at how all of these things came about. What 
produce them what was the reason why they became is is what we are looking at hallelujah that's what we are looking at so um i think i had a slide that i wanted us to look at um some part of that slide if you can put it up and um While we're doing that, if we can look at what Brother Bram said in the message, it is a rising of the sun. It is the rising of the sun. It is the rising of the sun, paragraph 308. It is the rising of the sun, 18th of March or 18th of April, 1965. Paragraph 308. Brother Bram said, <coughs> He is the one who opened those seals. He is the one who opened those seals. He is those seals. He is the one that opened those seals. He is those seals. For the old word of God is Christ. And Christ is the seals that was opened. Are you seeing that? He said, He is the one who opened those seals. He is those seals. For the old word of God is Christ. And Christ is the seals that was opened. What is the opening of the seals then? revealing Christ so what it means is that like I explained last week Christ is veiled if you have a container there is a content and the content is Christ the container is the seals that veil Christ is that clear so when the wrapper is taken off if you have a gift that is wrapped the wrapper is not what you need. It's what the wrapper carries and veils. That is what you need. So the wrapper is the seals. What is wrapped is Christ. Are you listening? Now you may see Brother Bram say, um, He is those seals. Try to understand. It doesn't mean that um, first seal is Christ. That's not what it means. He's trying to show to you that the focus, the content is Christ. Are you listening? If they give you a cake that is wrapped, for example, in order to eat the cake, you must take off the wrapper. If you decide to say, oh, because um, some of the cake is on the wrapper, you begin to eat the wrapper, you will enter into a problem. Is that right? So you take off the wrapper. Is that right? And then you begin to um, internalize what is wrapped so Christ is what the seals veiled what is that Christ seven thunders so the seven thunder is what the seal veiled the reason I'm bringing this to our understanding is that the first seal is the white horse rider He said, and when he opened the first seal, he said, come and see. That's, come and see what the seal is. He said, I saw a white horse rider. Is that right? He said, I saw a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Does it make sense to you? Now, what does that mean? It means everything that has been explained currently now is the seal. I don't see anything about Jesus there. Huh? The white horse is not Jesus. The rider is not Jesus. What the white horse was doing was anti-Christ. Was anti the world because he went forth conquering and to conquer. And he even went, the Bible said, that eventually a crown was given unto him. 
who is this person the devil he is the one that is riding so if you ask the question what is the first seal the first seal is the activity of the devil the same thing with the second the same thing with the third the same thing with the fourth is the activity of the devil now what we saw was the beast was a standard that the Lord lifted those four beasts but Abraham said they are not Tyrion they are actually living creatures because when you hear a beast it could mean something that is diabolical which is Tyrion something terrifying but these four beasts are the, the correct interpretation is living creatures is that right and they are around the lamb when he sat on the mediatoria seat because during the seven church ages jesus was a mediator so as a mediator he was in the ministry of a lamb Are you seeing that? So it is a lamb ministry that had the face of a lion. The lamb ministry had the face of an ox. This same ministry, the face of a man. Of an eagle. The lamb. All of these things are the ministry of the lamb so when the lamb turn this way you see a lion when it turn this way you see what an ox when it turn this way you see a man it turn the other way you see an eagle remember what I told you that these things are anointings that the lamb released to enable the bride cushion the effect of the ride of Satan are you listening these are anointings that the lamb released on his bride to enable her cushion the effect of the rides of satan so he released the face of a lion to combat what the white horse this one to combat the red horse to combat the black and this one to combat the pale horse are you seeing that so these are on, on anointings because as a lamb, it was on the mediatoria seat. Eventually, when he left the mediatoria seat, he became what? A lion. So I asked the question, what's the difference between this and this? <laughs> are you seeing something? This was when, this was a lamb. When he left the mediatoria seat, he became what? A lion and descended in 1963. So this was from 1963. This was during seven church ages. A real difference, there is a real difference between a lion. This is lion. This is face of a lion. Are you with me? It's not the same. This is face of a lion, not a lion. Can we get it? Face of a lion. And that's why Brother Brown said the face of a lion was a teaching ministry. I'm trying to give a recap of what we've done. How many of you remember? He said the Antichrist came with false teachings. So what did God do? He came with the correct teaching. He said that's why we had Paul. That's why we had Polycap. That's why we had Irenus. That's why we had Martin. A teaching ministry to combat false teachings. But they couldn't deal with it. Because eventually, um, he kept riding. He kept causing damages. Is that right? And so, when he went forth with more damage, he became what a red horse. The Bible said it was to take peace from the earth. It was to kill. 
this was what we call the dark ages of Thyatira wherein the bride of Christ they were slaughtered they were killed that was the predominant activity of Satan now that wasn't the first time people were killed we had martyrs also before like Stephen was a martyr Polycarp was martyred but he was not in the dark age huh? Polycarp was martyred so even before the the dark ages people have been killed but what what we saw was that that was Satan's predominant action to threaten God's bride with death and that if you do not do what I say I will kill you so what did God release he released the face of an oxen is that right in order which was to bear the burden to give your life willingly for the sake of the gospel. This was the anointing that was released on the entire bride. So this is not anointing released on a messenger per se. It's on the bride. Because it wasn't the messenger that was faced with death only. Everybody who claimed to be a bride was faced with death. So God had to release this anointing in order to help them cushion the effect of the damage that Satan was causing. Is it clear to us? So, now, I was telling us last week that I don't want to spend time again looking at this. I believe we already looked at it. But we said, put the slide up, please, quickly. Now, if you see clearly, you would see that... The, can you make this side very large so that we can... This side. Okay. So, if you... You would see 33 AD, which was the day of Pentecost. And then we see the age is the age of the fathers. Is that right? And that's the Alpha bride age there were no seals so what i've done here i put seed growth the ages then i put what was the religious disturbance in that age you know religious disturbance is a seal then later here i put satan came as a flawed and then we see the standard that god raised then over here we see the ministry if you can help me with my my this in my bag and my handkerchief. So now you would see that in that age, a 20 year period from 53 AD to 33 AD is the age of the fathers. We call it the Alpha Pride Age, not a church age. Um, it's not a church age, it's a pride age. Alpha means the first. That's what Alpha means. And during that period, there were no religious disturbances, no seals. Huh? The book was not sealed during that time. So Satan did not come as a flood against God's bride at that time. Because Paul says, when I'm gone, grievous wolves. Huh? We come in what? Sheep clothing and they will not spare the flock. So before the departure of Paul, that wasn't the case. Is that right? So we could say that in that alpha age, Satan did not come as a flood. So there was no need for the spirit of the Lord to raise up a standard against Satan. Now, when we come to the time that the church ages began, it was in 53 AD. And so that was the fall of the seed. Except a seed dies, it will what? abide alone. Is that right? If you got a, a seed of corn and you do not bury in the ground, you will have only one seed. If you kept a seed of corn on top of the table, it will remain just one seed. But if it falls and goes into the ground, it will multiply when it comes out in the harvest period. So that's the same thing. So you could see that even in the fall of the bride, God still had something he achieved. That's one of the beautiful things about God. You would see that even when something temporal happens, God still 
establishes his will when Jonah um, ran from the presence of the Lord he would not go to Nineveh is that right he felt that they were not deserving of what of any repentance that they should pay for their sins and so he went on his way to touch it different from where God sent him and we saw that the because the Lord needed to bring him back to his own job you know when God when you are part of God's program even you cannot refuse to do what God wants you to do you cannot refuse the reason why if you left God and you just keep on going is because you are not necessary for his work if you are needed if that was what was ordained of you you cannot go free God must bring you even if he has to mess you up he must bring you to himself he must bring you to himself so when you find an individual that left God and there is nothing pulling that person back to God is because he's not predestinated because if, if you are a seed of God God cannot do without you if you are a seed of God he cannot do without you as long as you are a seed he must get you he must get you he can't just let you go he say all that the father has given me they will what they will come he say I will lose none of them that's what he said so Jonah went his own way but what did we see The, the, the entire journey became turbulent on sea and he knew that he was the reason <laughs> and he told the people the only thing you need to do is throw me away from this boat that's the only way if not all of you will die now Jonah knew that God can kill all of them to get him <laughs> you don't know how God works if you are not of God look God can kill all of them just to get his man he can do that They, they, they had to throw him off the boat and eventually found himself in the belly of a whale. Huh? And he was so determined in the belly of a whale that he could find where the temple was by faith and cry that to God. Eventually, the whale, coincidentally, was the god of the people of Nineveh. And so when they were at the bank of the river, of the sea awaiting their God he came forth with his mouth open Jonah walked out of his mouth there was no way they would not listen to Jonah huh? so Jonah going away from the course that God set him eventually found himself in a more convincing situation for the people he was sent to so when you God knows everything that's why the steps of the righteous are even ordered by the Lord so even when you are going in a, in a wrong way, it's still God. Because he didn't say the righteous steps. Because that's the way most of us read that scripture. We think it says the righteous steps of the righteous. No, he said the steps of the righteous. So even a wrong step of a righteous man is ordered by God. And you will eventually know. Because we wouldn't have known that it was still God. It was still an ordering of God until we saw that he found himself in the, in the belly of the God of those he was sent to. Such that when the God, their God came ashore, huh? Jonah walked out of his mouth. That would have convinced them better than if Jonah came the, the, in the way that was the perfect will of God. So you cannot, God is a master craftsman. His master. That's why you cannot phantom God. You cannot. There are, there are many things that happens at times you just don't understand. You can't even just bother yourself about trying to know why. That's why when you just have to find, make sure that you can be led by God. Just enter into a place where He can lead you. And then everything is, is, is all solved. So even though they fell, Or even though they fell into the age, we saw that it was still a plan of God. Because if the seed was on its own, it could not grow into a great harvest. Is that clear? If it's on its own, it cannot grow into 
a great harvest. And so, that was the efficient church age. Brother Bram told us in the resume of the ages that the church in that first age was already a fallen woman. You remember the quote? Huh? He said she was already a fallen woman in that first age. So if you can find the quote why we, sti why we still have this um, Brother Bram said the church was in that first age already a fallen woman. That's the fall of the seed. He said as Satan had gotten to Eve before Adam, even now had Satan seduced the church, the bride of Christ, before the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the bride had fallen in efficient church age. Is that right? She was already fallen. And I showed you something one time. I said, during the age of the fathers, Apostle Paul was the one that had superior understanding than all of them. Peter attested to that. And so because he was the one with that powerful understanding, remember Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, while Peter was the apostle to the Jews. Now, of course, you know the Jews he was apostle to was the the, you know, in the bride of Christ, the first group of people that formed the foundation were mostly Jews. They were mostly Jews. All apostles were Jews. The earliest people that came in were what? Jews. So Peter was their apostle. Then, the Gentiles that were yet to come in, Paul was their apostle. And so because of that situation that Paul occupied, he naturally became the one that was the messenger to the efficient church age. It's almost the same thing. It's almost like the reverse you see in our day. Brother Bram is the messenger to the Laodicean church age. Then as messenger, he also, when a new age began, the Omega Bride age, he became the mouthpiece of the Lord himself. So the way Paul moved from a perfect age to an imperfect age, will Abraham move from an imperfect age to a perfect age? Can you see it? And both of them were what? Prophets. Paul was a prophet. William Abraham was a prophet. Is that clear? He said, and what specifically was in our midst? What specifically was in a mist that caused the fall? But Abraham said, what? But Revelation 2 verse 6. Is that right? Revelation 2 verse 6. Now let's go to Revelation 2. Please bear with me. We're going to be spending a long time on that chat. I want to use that to show us the age and the seals as they they all happen at the same time. Revelation 2, verse 6. Let's read from verse 1. And unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. What this means is unto Paul. Huh? So when you read, he's trying to say unto Paul, right? Because Paul is the angel. Do you believe that? Paul is the angel. So unto Paul, right? This thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven candlestick. Now, in all of the seven church ages, you will see an introduction like this. So Jesus is the one that is being introduced. Is that right? Now, so the scripture is showing us Jesus in different glory. In different glory. Like in Laodicean church age, he said, He that is the beginning of the creation of God. But Abraham said, He is the beginning. We are the continuation. Is that right? So you are seeing in each of the age, ages is, is, is introduced in different forms of his glory. So he said, He is the one that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Who walketh in the midst. Is that right? He walketh in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Now this showed to us that there are only seven messengers. 
we didn't see eight stars in his hand there are seven so the whole concept of an eight messenger is wrong it's wrong it's not true so now he says I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how dance thou canst not bear them which are evil and that thou hast tried them we say they are apostles so you would see that this church just coming off the perfect age they still add some qualities huh? they still add some good qualities they still add some 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 raw some perfection rubbed on them they could spot people that were that were wrong teachers remember the spirits that came upon them was what the face of a lion the face of a lion means this teaching anointing so they knew to spot those that were evil they know them they could not bear them they could not compromise them he said they as they tried them we say they are apostles and are not and they found them liars he said and as born and they asked they had patience and for my name's sake as labored and has not fainted this was the quality of God's bride in that age he said nevertheless despite all of these wonderful things that you have he said I have something against thee because thou hast left thy first love the first love was the perfect revelation that they had they had begun to drift from it at that time we had begun to have false teachers because that's what happens when false teachers come they come to take the people away from the truth say so you've left your first love so who seduced them it was a seduction is that what brother Bram said he said the bride in that first age had been what seduced seduced away from the truth and what is seduction seduction comes by what false teachings false teachings wolves grievous ones in sheep clothing had come in and they had begun to what water down the, the old landmarks and so before you knew it we began to have water baptism in the name of titles huh? when you are baptized in the name of titles you have not taken on upon yourself the name of God because in baptism we take on his name so when you are baptized in titles it's as if you just went into water to take a bath there was there is nothing significant that you have done by taking on titles and of course the titles you've taken on is indicative of idol worship because that's polytheism because there's actually a god that is three persons in one i saw somebody on facebook struggling to interpret the godhead using water huh on facebook using water they call him a great apostle he said you he said the water becomes ice and then the ice uh, from ice it goes back to water from water it goes back to uh, uh what do you call it when you are boiling the, to gases he said that's how the godhead is you know i've done a teaching here before i said that you cannot use water to interpret god because there is a freezing agent that acts upon that water to become ice for that water to become gas there is heat so it means there is a powerful force that is affecting the water but in the case of god there is nothing exterior that can affect god because for 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 water to become ice it must be affected the temperature must be brought down to zero degree for for water to become ga gas it must temperature must be raised to what 100 degree so where is the eating agent spiritual eating agent or spiritual freezing agent that can affect god it doesn't exist 
It doesn't exist. So that doctrine of three persons in one, you say they are co-equal, is all nonsense. Is that right? It's all nonsense. You say they agree with themselves. It's a idol worship. We believe that there is only one God. Only one God. Only one God. That's what we believe. We don't believe that uh, God became... You know, that's why when we interpreted um, John chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible said, In the beginning was the Word. But I'd rather to show to us that God has no beginning, but the Word has a beginning. So it's a creation. So what God did was to create a body. God did not, did not metamorphosize like a, a, a chameleon. You know, a chameleon, when he goes into a location, the location will make him change color. That's not what God did. God, oh sorry, like a caterpillar. Huh? That starts from what? Um, uh, locust. You have uh, palmer worm. You have canker worm. You have um, caterpillar. Then you have what? Locust. Is that right? Is changing. That's not the way God changed. God actually, because a caterpillar, a, a locust cannot go back to a canker worm. Once it becomes a locust, it cannot return to what? A canker worm or a palmer worm. But God created a body, God can return. Because God did not become, He created a vessel, entered into the vessel, can come out of the vessel. So God did not become. So you cannot use even, even the metamorphosis that takes place in a, 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 a locust from a palmer worm to become a locust. You cannot even use that explanation to explain God. You can't use that. God is simply in his own class. In his own class. He created a body, entered into the body, can come out of the body. Is that right? So, he said the bride left a first love Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. So this is why messengers were sent. And repent. Of course, you know what the repentance is. Repentance from what? False doctrine. And do the first works. Is that right? Do the first works. Or else, I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. He said, for this thou ask, that thou atest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also ate. Amen. Which I also ate. Of course, Brother Bram now explained to us, we are just trying to show to you the summary of the efficient church age. In case you are new here. This is what we've just read now, is the summary of that age. If you went to the exposition of the seven church ages why you see it very long because brother brown was picking each of those terms like in the introduction brother brown would say either have the seven stars he will begin to explain all of those things all of those explanations may not really pertain to the age but they are for your general understanding like in that um, message you would see where from verse 7 he said either at an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, when Brother Bram went here in that book, Brother Bram began to explain tree of life. And to explain tree of life, he must go back to Genesis chapter 1. That, this has nothing to do with the age. That's why if you notice, when Brother Bram introduced that book, he said it will also pertain to many major doctrines. I will teach on many major doctrines. So Brother Brown had to go to serpent seed. Now the doctrine of the serpent seed has nothing to do with the efficient church. I'm just trying to show to you something. So when you read that book, you are not just reading about the seven church ages. You are reading about many doctrinal concepts. You read about serpent seed. You read about the Godhead. You read about marriage and divorce. So when you hear Brother Bram explaining those things, it doesn't mean the people of that age understand what Brother Bram is explaining, no. It doesn't mean that because we have Brother Bram talking about serpent seed, it doesn't mean that Paul went to that age and taught them serpent seed. <laughs> like you see when Brother Bram talking about second death, it doesn't mean the message of that age, now is one of his messages was to preach second death. No, that's not what it meant. The, the, many of them did not even understand it. Are you with me? Um, so now I'm just showing to you the summary of 
that age. And you will see the summary here is actually in verse 6. The deeds of the Nicolaitans. That's the summary of the Ephesian church age. That was really the effort of the first us rider. Because Nicolaitan means to conquer the laity. Is that right? Nico Lathins. To what? Conquer the laity. So, who conquers the laity? The clergy. Is that right? The clergy. And so, this is where we began to have the hierarchy where you add at the top a pope. You have a cardinal. You have archbishop. In the Catholic system, they don't have archbishop actually. They have bishop. The Pentecostals, in order to replicate their own, they now have archbishop. Like in Pentecostal, there are many times here they say, oh, the archbishop. You know who they are referring to? Bessin and Dausa. When they say the archbishop, they still celebrate him till today. All of them are fruit of his uh, exploits, right? Now, in the Catholic Church, what they have is bishop, um, cardinal. Cardinal is above bishop, is that right? And then above cardinal is what? Pope, right? Um, but the Pentecostals now have what you call archbishop, above a bishop. Is that right? When you go to some other places, they have uh, pastor. Above pastor, they have what? Reverend. They begin to create all of this hierarchy system and in doing so, the intention was to subjugate the laity. So they bring down the laity. They now not tell the laity that they are lower than the clergy. So the clergy was the one that was bringing down the laity, subjugating them, lording over the people. If you go to the first seal, you will see almost the same word. Huh? He said he went forth to what? Conquer and to what? Conquer. So this subjugation of the laity in the Ephesian church age, you will see first seal there. That's what I'm trying to show to you. So you can see now how the first seal came out of the Ephesian church age. The white horse rider went forth conquering and to what? Conquer. What's the con conquering? The laity. Whenever false doctrine is preached, the laity is conquered. Because the laity is the body of Christ. So if they are starved of the true word of God, they have been what? Conquered. And anytime false doctrine is preached, the clergy is lifted above God's people. Because the Holy Spirit cannot walk in the presence of false doctrine. So and if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have the leadership of of the Holy Spirit. It then becomes the leadership of man. And so you have the same way the Gentiles lord over their people. Now I will just read some quotes to show us something about the first seal and the way it moved through these three ages. Remember we said that Ephesus, Smyrna, and Pegamos is under the first seal. Is that right? This is under the first the first seal. So now let's look at something here. In the first seal, paragraph 297, the first seal, paragraph 297. You see, look, he starts out to conquer. You see, notice, he has no crown. Huh? He has no crown. The white horse rider, I'm speaking of here, see, a bow and a crown was given him afterwards. 
But it started with what? A bow. No crown yet. See, he has no crown to start with. But a crown was given him. Notice later, he was given a crown. Yea, three of them, three on one. That was 300 years later at Nisir Council. When he started out, a spirit of Nicolithine to form an organization among the people. And then it kept on going, going on, going on, become a saying. Then it become a doctrine. You remember Christ speaking back to the church said, Thou atest the deed of these Nicolaitans, which I ate to, trying to conquer. Can you see the same thing? So Brother Abraham is showing you the first seal in this first church age. Trying to conquer. Take the Holy Spirit, just only one holy man. He could forgive all the sins and everything. So what it means here is that it was here he, was, he got a crown in Pegamos church age. Huh? Are you seeing that? The, the white horse rider. He started with a bow. He was given a crown later. He was given a crown at the Pegamon church age. But Abraham said after the Nisir council. And Nisir council took place because this age began in 312. Abi? The Nisir council was 325 AD. So he got a crown at the Pegamon church age. He said, and we just read it over there. Paul spoke of it. That that thing would sit in the last days and it couldn't be revealed to the last days. Then he that let it would take the spirit of God out of there and then he will reveal himself. He said, today is under the disguisement of a white horse. Wash how he changes from that white horse in a few minutes. He don't only become a white horse, he becomes a beast with many heads and horns. Now the white horse is a deceiver. Now, and that's the reason the people hasn't known it all this time. But they taught, but they taught it. But here it is now, it's going to be revealed by the scripture. Now Nico, Nico Latency, Antichrist, is finally is incarnate in a man, then he is crowned. You know, it starts as a spirit here. Yeah? Is that right? It starts as a spirit in Ephesus. Does it make sense to you? Then, as a spirit, it now goes to become a man here. Yeah? When he became a man, that was when we had a pope. So this is a pope that is what? Crowned. Because there was no pope in the Ephesian church age. Huh? There was no pope at that time. So it was later on in other ages we now had a pope, then he was now crowned. Can you listen? In? He said, when he starts off as a Nicolaitan spirit in the church, he is a spirit. You can't crown a spirit. But 300 years later, he become a pope. And then they crowned him. He had no crown to start with. But he got a crown later, see? When that spirit become incarnate, see? He become a man. Nicolaitan doctrine become a man. Then they could crown him. They couldn't do it because it was just a doctrine. Are you seeing that? So when he became a man, that's when the hierarchy structure became what? Established. So you now know that this is the way it is. All members of the bride are not equal. All members of the Christian community are not equal. The IS is a pope. Then you have, a, you have the cardinals. Then you have bishops. Then you have reverend fathers. Then you have reverend sisters. On and on before you have the normal people. So we are not all equal. So at that time it became what? Established the structure. But it started as a spirit a doctrine, then it becomes what? A man that was what? Cran in the Pegamon church age. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that has come forth. We appreciate you, Lord, for insight. 
Um, we're so grateful, Lord, that these things are known to us. And others cannot understand these things because it's not been given to them. But Lord, we can look back and understand the things that took place. It gives us more faith to know that the things promised in our day will also transpire as they were promised. Thank you, blessed Father. As we go into the rest of the service, we trust, Lord, that enlightenment will be our portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen.